Welcome back to Portfolio, everyone. And in today's video, we're going over the six stocks you should take a look at this week. All six of these companies report their latest earnings in the upcoming week. And of course, when earning reports come out, there may be some share price volatility, whether it's good or bad, and that could lead to a nice buying opportunity for these specific companies. So on this list today, we have a combination of both growth and dividend paying stocks. This gives you a bunch of variety and these companies actually operate within different sectors of the market. So earnings season is kind of dying down. All of the big name companies and the market leaders have already reported their Q2 results. So as this earnings season dies down, we have some more unique companies on this list today. But of course, these are six companies. They all report earnings in the upcoming week. And these are some stocks to take a look at if you want to buy something this week and you want to expand your portfolio. So these companies, like I mentioned, are both growth and dividend payers. I'm going to get right into the list right now. But as you know, everyone, I am the Gen Z investor. And every single day on this channel, we talk about different stocks you can buy overall stock market performance, and any other big stock market news and headlines. So please like and subscribe. I'm going to get right into the first stock you should take a look at this week. First one on the list is ticker symbol INTU. Into it, currently being traded at $322 a share. You can see here over the past 12 months, the shares are up just over 16%. They have seen March lows, but they have recovered back to where they were at the pre-pandemic level. Market cap for this company at around $84 billion, and this is a dividend paying company with a very small yield of 0.66%. So this is a company that operates within the financial tech sector. They offer different tax and accounting softwares to small businesses. And of course, in the time where small businesses are forced to shut down their physical location and kind of transition online, that may kind of push these small businesses into expanding using more digital software to you know, kind of run their business. And that is the type of business Intuit leads. They own a bunch of different software programs and websites that operate and kind of are directed towards small businesses who are transitioning online, which may lead to a nice expansion in their potential market. So if we take a look, this is a growth stock because their dividend is very small. And what we want to expect from a young company that is still growing is growing revenue year over year, which you can see here, total revenue over the past five years has been a nice steady upward trend depicted by this beautiful graph. And of course, with that, we like to see growing net income following that. And of course, this is a company that has been posting beautiful net income growth once again over the past five years. If we take a look at that dividend, current yield of 0.66% and a payout ratio just shy of 30%, there's a lot of room for this dividend to grow and this company is keeping a lot of money back in the business to reinvest and they've done a beautiful job of growing that dividend of close to 18.8% on average over the past five years, which is absolutely incredible. So although you're getting a slow starting yield, that dividend is growing rapidly each and every year and they have been growing their dividend for eight straight years. If we take a look at their dividend safety score, they have the second highest dividend safety score possible at 98. So there's a very safe dividend, very unlikely that that dividend gets cut anytime soon. That is the first stock on the list to take a look at this week. Moving on, stock number two to take a look at is more of a consumer staple, ticker symbol HRL, Hormel Foods, currently being traded just shy of $53 a share. One year chart, they're up 28%. So they did see a slight decline in March, but quickly recovered and have continued to grow. And of course, this is a company where as society continues to stock upon food items, people still hoarding food within their homes because they're uncertain if there will be another lockdown moving forward. This is a company that will see a nice benefit, hopefully, and will notice that when their latest earnings report come out this week. So this is a consumer staple brand that's been around for a very long period of time. They are a nice dividend payer, currently yielding 1.77%, with a payout ratio of only 55%, very sustainable, a lot of room to maintain the business and grow that dividend each and every year. And this company has a five-year dividend growth rate of around 16%, which is absolutely incredible. And of course, they are a dividend king with a 53-year dividend growth streak, which makes this dividend growth rate even more impressive. This company has been consistently paying out their dividend and growing it each and every year for 53 straight years through every recession and depression we've gone through during that time. And they still maintain a very sustainable payout ratio and they have a beautiful five-year dividend growth rate of over 16%, which is absolutely incredible. And this is a favorite in a lot of people's consumer section of their portfolios. If we take a look at their dividend safety, currently ranked 99, another very, very safe dividend paying company, the highest dividend safety rating possible, another company where it is very unlikely that they will cut their dividend anytime soon. And this is a company with a very low beta of only 0.45. So if you're looking for some stability within your portfolio, this may be one you want to take a look at. 
Stock number three on our list today is a financial company, the Royal Bank of Canada. So Canada has one of the strongest financial systems in the world. They have an oligopoly where there's about five main banks that control the whole market, and all of those banks are actually diverse and actually generate revenue from across the world. So we have two Canadian banks on this list today. The first one is the Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY. This is traded on the New York Stock Exchange as well. $74 a share, down 1% on the one-year chart. So although this company was hit extremely hard from the, from the pandemic, they have not fully recovered back to those pre-pandemic levels, which may make this a nice buying opportunity before we see a full recovery. So if we take a look, this is a nice dividend paying stock with a dividend yield of 4.27% sustainable payout ratio around 58% of earnings, and they've been growing their dividend for a long time. Their dividend is actually paid out in Canadian dollars, but they have a long consistent history of growing their dividend. So although this only states four years, that's because of the currency fluctuations over time. This company has a longer dividend growth streak than four years. And if we take a look at their dividend safety, currently ranked 80, so a very safe dividend, not very safe, but considered safe, another company where it's almost very unlikely or almost too impossible that they cut their dividend anytime soon. This is a company that I'm sure will at least maintain their payment over the next 12 months, but once the economy comes back up, they will continue to grow it each and every year. Stock number four on our list today is a growth play, which is salesforce.com, ticker symbol CRM. So of course, this is a technology company that helps develop different practices for businesses. And of course, in a world where businesses are you know, driven online right now, this is a company that will sure to benefit over the long term. One year chart, they have beautiful share price appreciation up over 40%, and they have a market cap at $186 billion. If we take a look at their latest income statement, you can see insane um, total revenue growth over the past five years, which is exactly what is expected from a high growth stock. We like growth stocks who are growing at double digit rates and revenue and net income each and every year. And if we take a look at the top line of their income statement, each and every year they're posting huge revenue growth. And of course, depicted by this graph, nice solid upward trend, which is very nice to see. And of course, during this time of economic shutdown, we'll see how they performed. If they were able to grow their market while the businesses were kind of transitioning online, we'll see how they compare, com did compete against other tech companies in their latest report that comes out this week. Stock number five is the second Canadian bank on our list today. This is TD Bank or the Toronto Dominion Bank, currently around $47 a share. This is one of the most financially secure banks in the world. This bank actually generates around 40% of its revenue from the United States, so it does have a large presence within the United States and Canada and in other countries across Europe and South America. So current year, they are down 12%. So they have been hit hard by the pandemic, but of course, the American banks like JP Morgan and Bank of America all have similar price charts with huge declines from March and are not yet fully recovered back to those pre-pandemic levels. On the 52-week range, they are trading somewhat towards the middle or the low side, which once again may make this a nice buying opportunity. Current market at $85 billion and a very nice yield right now at 4.8%. Payout ratio, once again, below 60%, so very sustainable. They've done a nice job of growing their dividend at around 8% on average over the past five years. And this is a company that will be very unlikely to cut their dividend anytime soon. They have one of the strongest financial you know, statements in the world with regard to banks. And I believe this company will continue to generate nice revenue for years to come. And with their dividend safety rating, they are at an 80. Dividend is considered safe. And once again, another company where that dividend is very unlikely to be cut anytime soon. And I want to put this into comparison that Royal Bank and TD Bank both have dividend safety ratings of 80 compared to companies like JP Morgan and Bank of America, who actually have lower dividend safety ratings right now. So the Canadian banks are some of the strongest financial companies in the world. The Canadian government really regulates their banks, so only these few banks dominate the market, and they're able to generate revenues massively each and every month and grow them year over year. So although the United States government does have regulatory agencies watching over the banks, Canadian government is a little bit more strict, so these couple few banks do dominate that market, and that just shows how they, even though we're in a tough time, they actually have higher dividend safety ratings compared to the big boys in the United States of JP Morgan and Bank of America. If we move on to the final stock on our list today, it is Dollar General, ticker symbol DG, trading just shy of $200 right now on the one year chart, insane growth of 43%. They did see a little decline in March, but quickly recovered and continued to grow past that level, trading very close to the 52 week high right now.
50 billion dollar market cap on this company this is another company that is sure to benefit from this pandemic once everything reopens people are going to be more conservative with their money people are going to realize that they may need to start you know reducing what they spend and dollar general of course being a low-cost realtor realtor um, retailer may be a company that might benefit when consumers are more you know, uh, money conscious and don't want to spend higher amounts of dollars for items they can find at cheaper stores. If we take a look, although this company is more of a growth play because their dividend is only at 0.72%, they have a very sustainable payout ratio of only 16% of earnings, so very unlikely that their payout gets cut anytime soon with regard to, how, with regard to their payout ratio. Overall, they've been growing that dividend for five straight years. If we take a look at their dividend safety rating, it is still considered safe at 64, but is the lowest dividend safety rating of all the companies we look, took a look at today. This is a company with still a low beta, so not a lot of price volatility compared to the overall market. And of course, we'll see if they did see a nice benefit during when the market reopened. And of course, even though the economic shutdown, people still needed some essentials and providing cheap essentials to people who, you know, may not have jobs or have lost a lot of jobs or, you know, have a reduced income, Dollar General may be have benefited and we'll find out from their latest report. So thank you for tuning in, everyone. As you know, every single Sunday, we go over different stocks you can buy for the upcoming week. Over the past couple months, we've been doing you know, companies that are reporting earnings because it was earnings seasons. But now that earnings season is coming to the end, we'll just have to go over companies that may have a nice buying opportunity with the upcoming week, even though they may not be reporting earnings. So thank you for watching. As you know, I'm the Gen Z Investor, and we post every single day on this channel. So please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.